Hi, this is Dr. Bernstein again with session 16 of Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes University. We're going to introduce in this series common myths from time to time. And uh, today we're going to talk about the myth of what the ideal blood sugar should be. It seems that most endocrinologists are telling patients that their blood sugars should be around 100, although many, in my experience, are telling patients to have much higher blood sugars, as high as 200. Now, why this variation and what's an ideal blood sugar? Well, first of all, it depends on whether you're a child or an adult. Most non-diabetic children are walking around with blood sugars in the 70s and even in the upper 60s without feeling hypoglycemic. That apparently is normal because that's what the siblings of my, non, of my diabetic uh, patients uh, seem to have. So, little kids, 70s, uh, rarely uh, upper 60s. I might also point out that uh, pregnant women, after the first trimester, usually run around 65 or so. So, pregnant women run lower than non-pregnant adults. Now, I've been using as a guideline uh, a blood sugar of 83. I didn't always use this. Back 40 years ago, everybody thought that 100 was uh, a normal number. Uh, there No studies were done. Uh, it was not easy to get blood sugars. I had the uh, first uh, blood, personal blood sugar meter, so I was the first person to be doing blood sugars all day long, and I was diabetic. Uh, uh, prior to that, to get a blood sugar, you had to uh, get a venipuncture and uh, wait several hours while they were doing it. So it was not uh, that popular uh, a determination to study. Uh, so we thought that normal was around 100. It wasn't until I, well, until I was in medical practice and I was located on a major thoroughfare and would get visits from meter salesmen, people selling blood sugar meters, and they would want to demonstrate the meter. And I would say to them, by the way, in those days, the salesmen were all male, young men. Nowadays, they're all young ladies. <laughs> uh, so there's been a transition. In any event, the, uh, I would say to these young men, I've had enough finger sticks, we'll test you for a change. And when I used my meter, which I knew was accurate, to compare with their meter, they all had blood sugars of 83. Uh, it was uh, like a, the Buddy Hackett recording uh, called The Chinese Waiter, where all of the patrons were 17. Here, all of the uh, salesmen were 83. And uh, I, it seemed to me like a normal blood sugar was 83. We did once have a salesman who had a blood sugar of 66, and he said he always was low. So uh, I was sort of impressed by how this number kept reappearing and eventually uh, moved my target uh, number down from 100 to 83. But I also started seeing studies published in the scientific literature of the mortality in the general population, not looking at diabetics, mortality versus blood sugar. And the studies that were done showed 
that 83 looked like it had the lowest mortality, that uh, people who had blood sugars of fasting, in this case it was fasting blood sugars, or sometimes it was hemoglobin A1Cs, and when we translated them to blood sugar, we got 83. People uh, who had 83 had the greatest longevity. Those who had lower than 83 uh, had greater mortality. Those who had higher than 83 had much greater mortality. So uh, the, the mortality in the general population seems to be optimal at 83. So why should diabetics be looking at 100? Now, that takes us to one other situation. The American Diabetes Association, as you know, recommends very high blood sugars and high hemoglobin A1Cs for everybody, uh, at least if they're called diabetic. And I had occasion many years ago, before I became a physician, to talk to some of the people who made the rules and find out why they were seeking such high blood sugars. And whomever I spoke to, I would get the same answer. Uh, a doctor would say to me, look, I specialize in diabetes. I have 2,000 patients or 3,000 patients, and they're all diabetics. And if they go blind or suffer kidney failure, or their legs are amputated, or they get congestive heart failure, that's a natural consequence, those are all natural consequences of the disease. But if one person out of 2,000 dies of hypoglycemia, I get sued. So I'm not going to allow my patients to be anywhere near a normal blood sugar because the risk of hypoglycemia then becomes too great. So I would rather them have blood sugars two or three or four times what a normal blood sugar would be. And in theory, that sounds like it makes sense. Uh, that the, Let's say that uh, a blood sugar of 30 could cause hypoglycemia and convulsions and even death uh, uh, that's only 53 away from a blood sugar of 83. Whereas a blood sugar of 250 is uh, 220 away from uh, uh, this dangerous area. So the doctor is much safer. But these are the same doctors that are prescribing very high carbohydrate diets and high industrial doses of insulin where you cannot predict the outcome of using such huge insulin doses. So they're at, they are at risk even though they're seeking higher blood sugars because the range of blood sugars that they're getting is so much greater, both upward and downward. And they're worried, of course, about the downward. So if we want to sum this all up, look at children, you're talking for the most part in the 70s, if they're prepubertal. If you're looking at pregnant women, you're probably talking uh, the mid-60s. If you're looking at most adults and uh, post-pubertal teens, you're probably talking about 83 as the ideal blood sugar. And that's, that's it. That's the summary. So good luck. Enjoy normal blood sugars. And we'll see you at the next session. Thanks. The bulk of what you've heard on this video uh, appears in my book, Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes Solution, which is available at uh, most internet and local bookstores. It is published by the Hachette Book Group. I'd like to remind you that we have monthly free teleseminars every month 
at the site askdrbernstein.net. Doctor is spelt D-R, so askdrbernstein.net for a free monthly teleseminar. Uh, sign up a day or two in advance so that you get a reserved seat. Good luck and thanks for listening.